Construction mm-hmm. Champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the house down twice a week, every Monday and Thursdays, 8 a.m. You can catch us on here, changing not just your construction business, but your life, because that's what being champions about. It's not just about being a champion at your house, at your business. It's also about being a champion at your house and your personal life and everything you do. As always, I am super excited for our guest today. Lindsay, it is great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited about this conversation and you're already talking my language about pulling in personal life and work together. So I think it's going to be great. I love it. Why don't you take a minute, tell all the construction champions out there a little bit about yourself, what got you here, what excites you, and uh, then we'll get rocking and rolling. Sounds good. My name is Lindsay Polis. I help companies keep their people safe at work by connecting the health and safety of the enterprise with the health and safety of the human. I focus on identifying the root cause and safety compliance gaps before any regulatory agency comes in like OSHA or the fire department in construction. It could be, you know, an audit from, you know, your main company or one of those other partners that's working on that construction site uh, so that appropriate resources can be allocated to close those gaps and then focus on overall total worker health. One thing that sets me apart is I use a tool called a personal hazard assessment, where I connect the physical safety with the mental safety in and outside of work. Um, The long story is I'm 25 years safety professional in the field. I'm a certified safety professional. I'm also a recent certified fire protection specialist. I'm also a international holistic health coach. So I think that's what sets me apart a little bit different where I can pull in the human aspect of it along with the technical side. Uh, I've, I've been a consultant most of my career. So I've seen hundreds of businesses ranging from construction industry to manufacturing, to university, to utility. And so I think that my experience is unique in the sense that I can pull from what these other industries are doing and provide insight to what whatever you know business I'm at just from what I've seen working or not working in the field. And I think overall safety has been part of my soul since I was a little kid. I was pointing out, you know, safety hazards to my parents and my family. And I just thought people didn't know how to, how to be safe, but I realized that they're actually making a choice not to be safe, which was like mind blowing as, you know, a kid. And I, I don't think I realized that till probably in my adult life, but I, I really love safety and I love connecting with people and helping them stay safe at work and stay safe at home. Awesome. Quite the resume. We've had the opportunity to have multiple conversations about this. You all are the expert in this field, and I'm excited to dive in and ask you the million dollar question today. And that is what makes a construction champion? You know, I put a lot of thought into this question because when people think of safety, they typically like roll their eyes back in their head or it's just like, Oh, the safety person's on side or, Oh, here comes another inspection. And I really think making a construction champion is someone who looks at safety, not as a burden, but as a, um, you know, as a tool so that they can do their job and go home the same way that they got to work or even a little bit better. And I think that if, you partner with your safety professionals and you partner with your safety inspectors, it's going to make the job more enjoyable. And so I think a construction champion is really somebody who looks at safety from that lens versus a burden. And not only are they looking out for themselves, but they're looking out for the fellow people on that construction site because construction sites can have hundreds of people and lots of hazards and lots going on. And if we're not looking out for other people, then, you know, accidents and injuries can happen. So I would say that's from a safety perspective, in my mind, what makes a construction champion? Absolutely. Hazards abundus on job sites. (laughs) Absolutely. Mindset. Not necessarily focus. I, I 100% when you relate with what you're talking about, when you're like, oh, here comes another safety officer. Oh, no, we better get our shit to how the OSHA's showing up. Or like, mm-hmm. how do we start to change that mindset in the construction industry? 
Well, I think historically it's been very punitive. It's, you know, when safety inspectors come on site or you're getting an audit, even just the term audit. I had this uh, conversation with somebody earlier this week about, you know, they want to go out and audit their sites, but they really want to come in friendly. They want people to welcome them. And I said, well, first of all, change the word audit. Like get rid of that word, you know, just say it's an assessment, a 360 review, call it something different. So even just the words we use can put people on the defensive. So I think starting with that and, you know, understanding that the people that are doing the jobs are human and they have lives outside of work and we can't expect everybody to show up necessarily 110% every day. So we need to work with them and understand where they're coming from, what challenges they're facing. Maybe they have an injury that, that they're not telling us about because they're afraid they're going to get in trouble, but they have to be there to do the job. So I think communication is a big, big starting point and just understanding that we're not there to get people in trouble. Mm. I like that because I think that's how a lot of it's looked upon is like, there, like anytime anything comes up with safety, it's always like, oh, well, I'm we're either going to get fined, somebody's getting in exactly. trouble. Like there is a stigma around it. Like what you just said is like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a looked at from a all bad perspectives. <laughs> I don't think yeah. there's really good ways people look at this. Right. Well, and I was on a job site this week and somebody, uh, we talk about injuries and accidents. They call out their safety statistics for each week on these, um, meetings that we have. And there was an incident where somebody did something and got in trouble, got caught, was doing it incorrectly. And they said, well, why do you think he did it? And they said, well, I think they thought he wouldn't get, or he thought he wouldn't get caught. And it's like, okay, so why are they, why are we putting people in a position where they, they feel like they need to do something unsafely. And then just the fear of like getting caught, like, it just seemed so weird to me as to what is this culture that we're building and where did this person come from before where they felt like they had to do stuff like under the radar so they wouldn't get in trouble, you know, like, why can't you do it safely? Like, what was the appropriate way to do that job? <laughs> well, yeah, it's a big risk versus reward, like in construction, right. like it's what, what are we willing to risk and what is the reward? And it's not, I think we have employees that ask their not, they don't even ask themselves this question. They just quickly process it in their mind. Like, here's the risk. What's the reward? What What's the, the possible bad outcome? And then it happens. But those, that, that culture starts at the top. Mm -hmm. Because if that's how we're running our businesses, where it's a bunch of risk and reward when it comes to not just safety, it just transpires over into safety. And that's where it becomes really felt because that's injuries happen, stuff right. happens that you see. The risk right. isn't necessarily monetary. It's like I could lose an arm or something. I mean, you, <laughs> I mean, people die on yeah. job sites. Like it's, right. and it's amazing that we weigh these risks versus rewards. Uh, and if we're going to get caught or if we're not going to get caught. Right. Well, that comes to the risk, the risk versus reward is where I come from. I call it a safety gambit, right? It's the risk that we take, take hoping for an advantageous outcome, a little play on Queens gambit. If you ever saw that show, but it is like, people are taking these risks and we do it in our everyday life. Texting and driving is one, you know, and it comes to our risk tolerance and everybody has a different risk tolerance. And you may have a certain risk tolerance for you personally, your company may have a certain risk tolerance, and that's where it comes into this risk versus reward. They're willing to take a higher risk for a higher reward. The unfortunate piece is if there is a catastrophic failure anywhere in that, it could be a fatality. It could be somebody's life. And that doesn't just affect you. It affects your family. It affects the job site. It affects all your coworkers, anybody that saw that accident. So it is something that people are doing on their everyday life, that risk versus reward at work, at home, it carries throughout. And I think that does start a little bit, a little bit with what did we see growing up, right? What did we see growing up in the industry, growing up as a child, our safety culture really starts 
as, as a kid and what we learn growing up. And then as we get into the workforce, what are our supervisors doing? And we hear so often in safety, safety, this is how it's always been done. Okay. Well, if that's how it's always been done, does it need to be done that way? Is it really actually the safe way to do it? So definitely hear you on that. Well, the, the, uh, standard across the, this is just how we've always done it, which I am a big component of just saying that's bullshit across the board, mm-hmm. no matter what, like, I feel like if that is your answer to anything that needs to be reevaluated. Like if your sole purpose for doing something is because this is just how we've always done it like that, you need a deep dive in that area of your business, no matter what it is. I agree. Yeah. That's, and, and why do we have to do it the way that it's always been done? You know, I think we're learning even with technology and all of the crazy things that are happening in this world right now, you know, we can do things differently. And there's so many innovative ways to get to a certain goal that can be safe along the way that doesn't have to be a burden. And that comes back to the mental, you know, the mental, um, status of people and the mental, uh, you know, just mentality of of the job site and of the workforce that you're that you're with awesome and i'm, I'm gonna ask you a question because you're the safety expert you're on these job sites mm-hmm. and you know a caught kind of just how i see it in the construction industry or have seen it is like it can seem like i guess what's the i'm just gonna go ahead and say it like if you tell somebody they're doing something wrong from a safety perspective or you report them you're looked at as being a tattletale mm-hmm. and you're going to be like blackballed no one's gonna to want to work with you i'm sure you ran into this it's not how yeah. it should be but like that is kind of the stigma around it because it's that risk 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 versus reward is you know it's like a core thing to be making these safety mm-hmm. violations and oh, you're going to hinder the project if you report that we're doing this stuff wrong. And then you don't even, they can't even have a conversation in house. How, like, right. What's your thoughts on that? I guess that's a lot to unpack. Yeah, there's a lot there. Well, I think it brings me back to, there's two kinds of safety professionals. There's your safety cop and then there's your safety partner. And when I started my career, I absolutely was a safety cop. I felt awesome. I felt powerful. I was like, I am going out there. I am finding every person that doesn't have their safety glasses on, not doing it right. I'm telling them to do it. And I am going to make myself feel valued. And I think one of the things is safety sometimes does not feel valued, right? Where we hit the bottom line. We're not a profit center. Let's be honest. Uh, And so there's maybe a little bit of that feeling like I need to justify my job. So as I've aged in my career and I've gotten more experience, I've under, I understand there's a different way. There's a better way. <clears throat> and that's partnering with people, right? So coming from it as a safety professional, and maybe it isn't the first time that I notice you doing something that I'm going to f- filter it up the chain, right? I'm going to remind you, I'm going to say, Hey, how are you doing today? I'm going to connect with that on a personal level. And if I see them doing again, maybe it is another reminder, but if it starts to be a trend, then I'm going to have a conversation and say, and maybe before I report them up the chain, it is a, Hey, if I have to continue having this conversation with you, we are going to, you know, have to report this. It's identifying these near misses early on having those conversations, connecting with people and kind of letting them know, like, Hey, I see you. I understand you're under a lot of pressure, but what can I do to help you? How can I help you help yourself to be safe in doing the task that you're doing? Yeah, I, I think the partnering in what you're talking about, just opening that lines of communication, the cop, the safety cop, like that's what it can feel like. Like, For sure. like it's the, the somebody's just out here. They're always looking for the wrong. Right. Like that, that's how that relationship can feel. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure people have worked with both types of people, both types of safety officers on their job. And you can feel the difference in working with those two different people. And who would you rather have on your job, right? You want someone that you want to be able to pull in. You want to be able to say, Hey, I'm having trouble with this, or this tool isn't working properly. Is there a better one? Or, you know, we've got all these old cords and they're all frayed. Can we get new ones? Help us like, let us 
let the safety people help you get what you need. So sometimes I'll go in and do assessments or audits for people and I'll say, what do you really need? Where do you need help? And it's, oh, we can't get, um, you know, money for safety shoes. For example, uh, our company doesn't want to pay for them or we can't get the right PPE for something. Okay. Well, where, where is the risk in that? Have we had any injuries in that? Let's tie that together and build a case of why this is important, let alone it's a, it's a regulatory requirement that your employer has to pay for PPE. But if we come just like, you have to do this because of the regulation, that might just be a check the box. I did my assessment. It goes on the shelf, but if we can build a case from the human side of it and connecting the safety of that physical and mental safety of those employees, then your job site's going to be way more productive. So understanding that just one thing from a physical safety perspective really ties into the mental safety of your people and how they're going to show up for work. They're going to work better for you if they know that you care about them. Yeah, 100%. And I like, you know, now we're bridging that gap into the mental side of things, which is something that is definitely becoming a subject of conversation in the construction industry because mm. for a lot of years I'm an old dog in the industry I mean <laughs> we just work 15 20 hour days and just keep showing up and making it happen every day and there there's consequent there's safety risks with that mm. nowadays that we had yeah. never even really thought about other than there's such a focus on just getting the damn job done and mm-hmm. I see you're right at the forefront of this and having those conversations. What, where are you seeing that go on job sites? How is that being not just uh, received by guys in the field, but also from companies? Yeah, it's still a little bit all over the place. And I think that it is definitely become more a topic of conversation. Uh, I would say since the pandemic, even I know that it was before, but I think the world just changed after, you know, two or three years of working differently and people kind of taking a step back and saying my mental health matters. Right. So I've heard a lot of, um, there's mental first aid and that is something that I, I was around before the pandemic, but I've definitely heard more people talking about it. I've heard more toolbox talks talking about mental safety and uh, coming to work uh, mentally prepared to do the job. So I think it is starting to infiltrate the job sites and infiltrate the, the workers. And I think people are, you know, in agreement, they're all nodding their heads. Yep. Yep. This is important. Uh, I still think it's early though. I think there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, continue this work and continue the conversation and building as like a psychologically safe environment where people feel confident and, um, emotionally safe to bring up their concerns. And I don't know that we're there yet. I still think, especially in, you know, uh, construction is predominantly male and, you know, just men and their feelings is always something that's challenging, right? Let alone put them on a construction site and then ask them how they feel about something. (laughs) So I think there's a little bit more work we can do there, but just opening that conversation up and, uh, understanding that if you bring something up, you're not going to get fired for it. It's, um, just can continuing that conversation. And it has to start from the top. Like you mentioned, your, your executives have to understand that it may, you know, slow down things a bit if there is a concern and there's, you know, a reckless pursuit of profit in, in industry and in the world today. And so pulling in mental stability and mental safety might slow that down. But if we all get on board with it, then I think it will continue to uh, just allow people to show up in a better mental space or even just giving them tools. So say you've had an argument with your, your wife on the way to, to work, or uh, you're, you had a new baby and you had to drop them off at daycare. I use this as an example for me, I was like stressed out. And then I did go to work and it took me a little bit to like readjust to that new thing. Right now I'm, now I'm in a different environment. I'm not in mom mode. I'm in like construction work mode or or safety mode. And what tools do I have outside of just saying, Oh, there's EAP, right. Employee assistance program. That's great, but that doesn't work for everything. Right. There has to be a more, um, unique process or a more, uh, individualized process for really 
allowing each person to dive into their own mental status, the, the way that they see fit, I guess, if that makes sense. No, that, that 100% makes sense. I mean, the construction industry, I, I, I would agree. There's a long ways to go with what we're talking about here. Cause it's going to be a hard egg to crack. Like it's, and it's not because I think the industry just kind of gets a bad rap with this. Like people think mm-hmm. it's because it's the construction industry. Like you said, they're just chasing profits. They don't care. There's any, and I don't, I just don't think that's the case. I just think like, there's a lot of guys like myself, I'm what I'm, I'm not, I'm 39 but I've been around the construction industry for 15 years. There's guys like me that are running companies that Mm -hmm. cut their teeth. Like I cut my teeth out in the field as a, Mm -hmm. just a a laborer into a foreman and then into a supervisor and then worked my way through all of that. And like, there's this grind mentality. There's just this, this, like, this is just like we talked about earlier. Like this is the construction industry. And it's it's hard to 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 get guys, especially, to take a look at that and have these conversations because there is the 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 fear of people being fired is mm-hmm. like that that's been around forever. It's like, oh, yeah. if I don't show up, I'm going to be fired. And I mean, I'm a corporate of this. Like I was part of that, part of that realm in the construction industry. Mm-hmm. As I grew as a leader and grew as an operator, like I under, you start to understand this stuff, but yeah, just a lot of old school construction businesses out there. And it's, we have a long ways to go. I think we've made great strides, but like. Yeah. I don't think though, like sometimes people will, and even like, as we're talking about this, it makes me think, oh, people might say, oh, you're just, um, we're creating a soft environment, right? No one's going to get in trouble. You know, I live in California and we're soft on crime here. Right. So we don't want that. We want, we want people to understand that there are still consequences, right. For your actions. We want you to take responsibility for your choices and your risk taking, right? And understand that you're not only jeopardizing you, you're jeopardizing everybody around you and your family outside of that, right? People that aren't at that job site with you. And so mental safety is absolutely something that we need to pull in, but that doesn't mean that we're going to look the other way the whole time and say, there are no consequences. Obviously we want to come from a place of communication and education and building people up to make those choices and make, you know, safety a priority, physical and mental safety. But if you're going to continue to make poor choices, we want you to make those choices maybe somewhere else. So it doesn't affect our job site, right? Mm. Cause we don't want injuries. We don't want accidents. We don't want anything to happen to you. I love you're speaking my language, like, because it is, it comes down to accountability. Like this is mm-hmm. how we do it here. I'm going to hold you accountable to that. Just like I want you to hold me accountable to this. But if you don't want to participate, like you can't have your pie and eat it too. Right. You can't think it's cool to do this, but we're not going to do this. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't work. So you, you have to have that accountability piece. And I think not just the construction industry, but as a whole, people use this mentor aspect of things as a way to try to go out of or escape accountability for bad decisions they're making Mm -hmm. when like what you're talking about is right on point. Like you just have to put it out there, have the system, have how you do it at your company and then hoard people accountable to that. And it's going to weed the people out that are playing the game. Yeah. Well, and you have to look at it again as you're making choices, not just for yourself, like your actions affect other people. And I've said it already a couple of times, but I think that's really the route that people forget when they take really risky actions or they make a really risky choice. They forget that, or it's just, they don't care, right? That that it's only, you know, like the one person that we heard about this week making a choice. Oh, I didn't think I was going to get caught. Okay. Now you did. And now what? Right. So like, why talk me through what, 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 what was the decision-making process in that, you know? And so if we set the standard 
of this is how we want to work. And, and especially newer people starting companies like set this safety culture, this, um, open communication culture, this there, it, there will be accountability. I will support you. I will provide what you need. I will, you know, talk with you. I will give you the tools, support you in education, but also there is going to be accountability. And if you don't want that, then maybe this job site isn't for you. And I think that's within any industry. Awesome. I love it. I love it. You're doing great things out there. Uh, for all the construction champions out there, if they wanted to connect with you, follow you, look into more about what you do, where's the best places for them to do that? Yeah. So like I mentioned, safety gambit is, uh, the term that I've, I've coined a little bit with these risks that we take and the advantageous outcomes we hope for. So I do have a podcast, it's called the safety gambit. So you can search that and I have all kinds of different things, uh, different guests on that, uh, you know, talking from mental, mental health, uh, kindness, um, I have safety experts on there and then experts from other industries, construction, you are on it. Uh, so you can follow me there. I'm also on LinkedIn and, uh, I can, you know, communicate with you there. I'm also on LinkedIn. So at Lindsay underscore polis, uh, you can also just send me an email at, um, Lindsay at Lindsay polis.com. And it would be great. I love to connect with everybody. I'm curious to know what people are, you know, facing the challenges that they're facing, especially when it comes to really tying in this mental, physical safety, uh, realm together. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lindsay, for taking the time and being on the show today. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I love the offer to be here and happy to share all things safety. <laughs> thank you. All right, Construction Champions, another amazing episode where we really dove into safety. And I want to ask you a question. Is, are you a safety cop? Or I just, not, it takes safety out of it. Are you a cop on your job site? Whether you're the owner, a project manager, a supervisor, wherever you at are in your career path, when you show up to a job site, is it like the FBI showing up to somebody's house? It's like the change that happens, everybody locks in, there's all this because they know you're just there looking for the wrong. You're just, you're there looking to figure out how that you can bust somebody and just haul them off. Like this is this is how it works a lot of times. I've been on both sides of this. I've been on it as on the job site when that that cop or whatever that supervisor showed up, and you're like, guys, we got to lock this in, or else this isn't going to be a pleasant afternoon. How do you show up for everybody around you when you show up out in the field? Are they all of a sudden doing a bunch of stuff that they should be doing, but they're not because they're trying to bust their ass and get stuff done super fast. But when you show up, they try, they just, they throw the bandaid over it and make it look like they're doing everything how they're supposed to. Or are you showing up on the job site and nothing changes because the guys know you're not looking for like the problems. It's like, Lindsay's talked about the safety partner. Like, are you partnering with your guys to take them to the next level? Are you figuring out what they need to be better at their job? Or are you showing up and just pointing everything out? Oh, hey, that extension cord should be this way. Oh, hey, you should have these boots on. Why are these two guys out here doing this? Like, how would you feel? If every day when you were sitting in your office, somebody came in and was like, hey, Mr. Business Owner here, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Like you would get discouraged and it would make you take risks you typically wouldn't take. So think about that. Look in the mirror. Have this conversation with yourself. I think we all have a lot of room to grow in this area. And construction champions, if you want to be a champion, it's that's what it's going to take. Like I say all the time on here, you got to go look in the mirror. So make sure you go check out our website, constructionchampionspodcast.com. Check out all of our sponsors that keep the show rocking and rolling. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be. Champions, I am super excited to talk to you about 
our partner, Contractor Staffing Source. Paul and his team have over 40 years, or Paul himself has over 40 years of experience in construction, and he knows what it takes to not only grow and scale a company, but also hire the absolute best for your company. And with this partnership, we have put together an amazing bundle of free resources from his free million dollar hire course to a free disassessment to a free cognitive ability assessment. All you have to do is go click the links at Construction Champions Podcast or in the show notes for this to access all these free resources. This is the kind of partnerships that Construction Champions Podcast will be bringing Ones that add value, just like all of our other ones, this one adds massive value to your company and where you're headed in the future so you can continue to grow and become the champion you were meant to be.